five Yu-Gi-Oh decks that are really difficult and that require a lot of skill. You know, with the rise of a Shizu tier elements being, I feel, a very skill intensive deck, I wanna talk about some decks throughout the history of Yu-Gi-Oh that I feel require a lot of skill and can be difficult to play in one form or another. So let's dab on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that subscribe button so we can get to our goal of, well, we're actually already at 1,000 subscribers. I need to get out of the rhythm of saying that so we can climb even further beyond into the 1K ladder, currently sitting at 1,013 subscribers. I really appreciate all the support, all jokes aside from the bottom of my heart, and the Ultra Ball appreciates it too, because it helps our catch rate up so that we can, I don't know, get a girlfriend or something one day, or just so that he's not flaccid and soft, he's nice and hard. So smash it so that you can be part of the A gang. What you waiting for, boo boo? So at number five, these are in no particular order. Believe it or not, I have Goat Control. Now, Goat Control in its own format is a skill intensive deck. And it's for the reason of Goat Control format itself. You look at Goat Control format and it's very chess heavy, so to speak, where I mean, I guess it helps if you've seen my GOAT format retrospective video, shameless plug, you should go and check out my retrospective series if you're new to the channel. We break down old Yu-Gi-Oh formats and talk about them and the history of them and things like that. Um, but in GOAT format, there was something I said in the video where I said, you're playing your deck as much as you're playing your opponent's deck. And that's where the skill comes in because you want to maximize your card advantage. You want to know when is the proper time to drop out your Black Luster Soldier Envoy at the beginning, which was a power card boss monster in that format. You want to know when to play mind games or not with your set mirror force, when to properly activate it to get the most out of it and so that your opponent just doesn't pop it with a heavy storm. Playing through cards like Delinquent Duo or Heavy Storm, things like that. You know, yeah, in 2022, if you look at Go Format tournaments, the main deck that most gets the most amount of wins that most people play is like Thunder Dragon Chaos Control or some variant of Chaos Control or Chaos Turbo. Some Chaos Control decks playing a small goat package with like three scapegoat and things like that. Um, but the GOAT control deck itself is still very skill heavy. And I would argue that Chaos Turbo and Chaos Control variants in that format are variations of that that just may not take as much skill as compared to GOAT control. However, the fundamentals of that format and the skill involved in that format still remains the same. So at number four, I have Necroz 2015 edition. Now, if you have not been keeping up with the channel for years, which I'm sure probably none of you have at this point, if, if those channels are even subscribed, they're probably just dead channels anyway that they don't that people don't even use anymore. But I played Necroz back in the day when it was tier zero, when Dijin released her rituals was running around. And that mirror match, you had to play in such a way, and when Necroz was tier zero, people just basically played game one as if they were playing a Necroz mirror, where like they would banish their own cards with Necroz of Valkyris to draw two. And then, like, they would basically just end on no board so that they couldn't get trisha led by the opposing Necroz player. And, like, it was just a very skill-intensive deck. I feel that even to this day, you can gain some skill from playing it and playing in that format. You know, yeah, you had some baby back bullshit with, like, Patrick Hoban having a gentleman's agreement to take out a Dijin just to side deck in a Dijin and being a dick. But that was back then, this is now, you know, Necroz in a nutshell is still, I feel, a skill intensive deck, much more than I feel like Dragon Rulers. Like people say that Dragon Rulers, the mirror match is skillful, and I just think that's a pile of dog shit. I don't see how that's even like skillful. Like I remember back in that format, I beat some dude in a Dragon Ruler mirror match by just sitting on a Debris Dragon and I was 400 light points higher. So when we went to time, we had the three turn rule at the time and I won in time. Like it was really hilarious because I was just too afraid to attack. Um, so I don't really see how it's any sort of skill involved in that particular format. Um, honorable mention to Dragon Rulers, I guess, even though they really weren't all that skillful, but I guess in some regards, they could be more Necroz than anything. So they definitely take the number four spot. At number three, I have 200 plus Step Infernity FTK Edition. Now, Infernities, when they first came out in 2010, were a very combo heavy deck, you know, with three launcher, three barrier, three archfiend, all that fun stuff. 
Um, it was a very combo heavy deck that just crapped out synchros like nobody's business. Um, but it wasn't tier zero. And really it was between X Sabres versus Infernities for a while. Like that was the main two tier one decks. Uh, but more specifically, when we had cards like Lava Will Chain later on in Yu-Gi-Oh! with the Xyz era, and people were coming up with like these 200 step Infernity combos that use Lava Will Chain to where you ended on like an FTK. And like these combos would take like literally 30 minutes to do to the point where when the deck was a thing, I talked to players who were literally like, I'm not going to side deck for it because the combo is so complicated that either A, my opponent's going to misplay and B, even if they do get it off, it's not that consistent anyway, so I should still win the match. Like people wonder why Infernities haven't really come back and this is the big reason why because you know, no one wants to be sitting across from an Infernity player. People are tired of the, that shit right now. Like, sitting across the table from tiers, and they're going, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I milled five cards, and now I trigger this, 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 this. Resolve the chain. Okay, here's a new chain, and it's like, Jesus Christ, just shoot me in the face now. Like, could you imagine that shit with Infernities? Holy balls. So, yeah, no, Infernities can go die in the corner. Um, but, yeah, we had, like, these, like, hundred, like, literally, it was, like, 150-step infernity ftk garbage that was just it was so toxic like people said this format's toxic nah pimp try going and playing like fucking infernities with 150 steps it's disgusting and number two i have pendulum specifically pendulum magician like the pepe deck back in 2016 i wouldn't really say took a lot of skill it's just a very combo heavy deck for its time but pendulum specifically because i feel like with pendulum you can't just look at the hand and say okay this is what my end board's going to be you have to kind of play it out because depending on how the opponent responds with like hand traps or something granted hand traps aren't seeing a lot of play right now but still the argument remains the same unless you're a sprite player then you're playing like 12 hand traps <laughs> um you have to kind of play out the hand to see how it ends like you may have an idea of how it ends but some Similar to something like a Shizu tier, although granted it depends on what you mill, pendulums you have to kind of play out because if your opponent negates one thing, then you have to kind of go with your plan B and your plan C. And you have to be able to have enough gas to get there. And so I feel like pendulum is very skill intensive and a very complicated deck in that regard because you can't just look at the hand and say, okay, this is a good hand. Like we're, we're hitting consistently. Like you have to kind of play it out to see where things lead to. So it definitely not the most complicated deck. I think that things like Necroz are much more complicated just because of the fact that you have to know your matchups. You have to know, especially the mirror match. Whereas like with Pendulum, you're basically just trying to set up 17,000 Trift Negates and just, you know, move on with your day and hope that they don't have Dark Ruler or a Hand Trap or something. So I, I think in that regard, it's it's not as skill intensive as like other decks. You just have to play out the hands instead of just looking at a hand and saying, okay, this is how it can end. At number one, of course, we got to mention it, is Shizu fucking tier elements. I would argue is like one of, if not the most confusing deck I have ever tried to play in my history of Yu-Gi-Oh! And I've been playing competitively since 2008, uh, right when Synchros came out, like two weeks before they changed the fusion deck to the extra deck. I was going to my locals first couple times and learning how to play the game competitively. And Ishizu tier is just so confusing because, you know, depending on what your mills are and that RNG factor depends on what your board is going to be. You also have to factor in the mirror match, which we're in a tier zero format. So you might as well prepare as if game one is a mirror match. You got to be able to consistently make that abyss dweller and shut the opponent out of their graveyard. You have to be able to establish a big enough board to where your opponent can't just break it or if it's in a mirror match fuse into their fusion monsters to just rip your board apart before you've even begun and so i feel that because of that rng factor it makes a shizu tier element such a tough deck to play like even robbie cole made this uh point in one of his videos today where he's like new Yu-Gi-Oh players into the game it's not very i guess new friendly for lack of a better term and like, he, he's totally right. Like little Timmy or Johnny, whoever the fuck can't like go to locals and play his brand new Neospatian deck with EN Shuffle out of the Battles of Legends set. Cause he's just going to get milled the fuck out. Like real talk. <laughs> like it's, it's not new user friendly right now. And like, obviously that's going to get cleaned up with a ban list, but there is not often a time where something like a Shizu tier element comes along that is so confusing, but yet rewards the pilot so much if you play it correctly. 
you know, you could even argue that to an extent that makes Naturia confusing because they have a lot of confusing plays as well. They're very combo heavy, but I feel like a Shizu tier just takes the cake. Because even with Naturia, if you get hand trapped a couple times, as long as you end up like a Naturia beast, like you're you're good, boo boo. So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Is there any decks that I missed? I had to stop recording a couple times to make sure I had my list right. So I apologize for the jump cuts, but I want to make sure that I kind of hit everything in here. So that's everything I could think of. You know, there was plenty of honorable mentions that you could talk about, maybe like, you know, Zodiac or something, but I feel like Zodiac was kind of more mindless the, besides these other decks. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments if there's any deck that I missed and I will see you in the next video.